So you're looking to pass this ADO E716, this Adobe Commerce Expert with Cloud. Joseph here at Swift Otter. And I'm Chris Naniga, the Director of Training Development at Swift Otter. And we are here to talk to you and tell you how you can pass it. Because guess what Chris just did here a, couple, well, a few days ago. I did. And we're going to share his experience. And Chris, I'm really grateful for you you going through that effort to be able to pass this test and to share your story. I don't know. How about you open up with a few uh, comments as far as what what did you think about the test overall? Sure. And, uh, uh, you know, my, my experience is probably a little bit different than most devs taking the test because taking the Adobe certification exams is like a research project for me as we're putting <laughs> study material together. I also like this, this corresponds roughly, however, it got renamed with a, with a Magento certification I had from before. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely mm -hmm. been a long time. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, what I, what I discovered is that, uh, I mean, to be honest, the, the, the fact that I've been working on Magento for years probably, probably helped me a lot. I didn't, I didn't necessarily go through kind of the like intensive prep that a lot of you are going, going to, to go to, but that that's just to kind of point out, uh, that, that, you know, it is the harder exam between professional and mm -hmm. expert. And it is the one where they kind of expect you to have been working on the platform for a couple of years. Uh, so that you, so you shouldn't expect to be able to kind of jump into this after doing Magento for a few weeks or a couple months and pass this right. exam. Um, uh, you do need that, that hands-on experience. Um, you've been working in Magento for what, 10 years, right? 10 years since the days mm -hmm. of Magento one. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, and, and most of that, all of it has been at an agency, right? Or at various agencies, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it's always been agency yeah. work. Okay. So, I mean, in a lot of ways, maybe your tenure, if I could use some pun, near, pun there, your tenure has been uh, longer than maybe some other developers, plus or minus. But like, um, at the end of the day, it's agency work. And you're, you are working, you've, you've built a ton of websites and help architect and consultant all the different various levels. But um, that's... Your your the this background of experience aligns very similar to probably the majority of the people who are taking this test and or watching this video, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm I mean, uh, I would say my experience has been pretty typical. Um, I, and I've been, you know, I've been in tech lead roles sometimes. I've been in solutions architect roles sometimes, but obviously that's pretty typical too for someone, uh, mm -hmm. for a developer yep. of this level that's going to be going for the expert exam. I think probably we, we wear all of those all of those hats uh, in agency work. Mm -hmm. So as a expert, and you, I think you definitely fit that category, how did you feel this expert test was? Did you feel like it was um, going, just rolling downhill, super easy? Did you feel like it was the opposite of that, climbing a mountain step by step, just slogging through it, and you're wondering every question whether or not you're going to pass this test? Like, what were sure. your emotions going through this test? Um, yeah, well, I mean, it was easier than Master Architect, which we've we talked about on a previous stream that <laughs> yes. I failed miserably. Yeah, that's right, that's like true. that's kind of the premier challenging right. test. I, I mean, I I think this hits the the level that we would expect as kind of the mid tier mm -hmm. uh, certification exam. There's definitely there were yep. definitely challenging topics on there, um, but I was I mean I was pretty pleased with the difficulty level of it most of the way through. Mm -hmm. of, of like I have a handle on this stuff. Uh, I, I know this stuff. Uh, you, you know, we just recently put out an update to our course uh, for prepping for for the expert exam. And I, uh, I I did a little of the content on that course, but but didn't kind of have exposure to the whole thing. But I was able right. I was able to note while I was taking the exam, there were specific questions on there that I was like, oh, I, I specifically know the answer to this because of the brush up yeah. that I did for like the sections that I worked on on the course for sales, sales topics and database, database topics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I was like, ah, I, I know that because I encountered that recently when we were putting that course together. Right. So that sounds like that was helpful in that case. Do you remember your biggest surprise on the test? Like what, what took you by surprise the most? Um, how many cloud questions were on it, I guess. Um, <laughs> okay. the, there were 24 cloud questions 
in, in an exam okay. that has 69 questions. Um, and they're all, Which I mean, a lot. when you go out and take the exam, they're all going to be grouped together for you. Cause, cause I remember mm -hmm. I made it like two thirds of the way through the test going, are there actually going to be cloud questions? Uh, but right. then there were, because it was like the rest of the test after I reached a certain point. Um, so, yes. so they're not kidding about, about adding that cloud topic into the exams. Which, you know, and I'm just going to throw this in here real quick. There is some pushback in the community about adding this these topics in. And I think the question people ask is, is it, or why would you do this? And I think we don't need to know the answer as a community. It's Adobe's product. And so it's up to them to make that determination of how important that is. However, um, at the end of the day, I agree it does put some in, an interesting burden on most developers because in my experience, uh, there's, and let me know what, you're, what you think about this, but uh, at many agencies, there's a DevOps team or person or some buddies, and then there is kind of the development pipeline. So in, obviously they have to work together, but it's not like everybody does DevOps as such. So there's, there's usually a separation of responsibilities to one extent or another. And it's, it's a matter of like, okay, you're kind of bringing the two of these together on the same test. I get trying to push cloud adoption, familiarity and all that stuff, but um, it definitely seems uh, a little bit um, of mixing job responsibilities yeah. when it comes to this test. Because, I mean, uh, if, if you even have access to an experience with with cloud projects at all which you know mm -hmm. depending depending on uh the specific work you do you may or may not um mm -hmm. you you may just not even touch the cloud specific aspects to it i've worked right. on a few cloud mm -hmm. projects uh at at a couple different agencies and it's quite honestly it's been quite a while um but mm -hmm. but you know you have your uh kind of frontline developers that may that may go through an entire build and never touch anything that has to do with cloud, even if it's a cloud project, right. because they're developing code. That's right. And and they're submitting PRs. Uh, they're not the one responsible mm -hmm. for deploying it uh, or configuring the server. So uh, they could be you could be working on a cloud project for months and and not and not touch any right. of these topics. And then you might mm -hmm. be the tech lead on a project that is responsible for deployments. And so you need to know something about about the Magento cloud specific aspects. Uh, you know, of, of, of how to deploy mm -hmm. things, but you're probably still opening DevOps tickets for, you, you know, configuring services uh, in your cloud environment. So, yeah, it's bringing together a lot of topics that a lot of developers are just not going to, to, to have exposure to that on a regular basis, even if they have access to cloud. So that kind of brings me to my next point in, you might say there's some discomfort about taking this test by a lot of people, whether you, or not you have, I mean, some people don't even have access to a cloud environment to be able to study. Some people do, and they just literally have never touched it. Um, what would you recommend as far as overcoming this discomfort, this feeling that like, I, I, I don't even, I don't even, can't even get access, especially for that one group who don't, doesn't have access to a cloud environment. How would, how, what is your thoughts as far as them being able to, be able to pass this test. Is there even hope for this? Right. Um, well, like I said, it'd been, it had been it had been a long time since I had any uh, any dealings with cloud, mm -hmm. uh, e even though I have had hands on with it in the past. And I got I I think I, I, I easily cleared eighty percent on my cloud questions, um, which is amazing on, on the test. Um, and it's just because I've been immersing myself in that specific topic leading up to mm -hmm. taking taking the test uh not necessarily i hadn't necessarily been doing an extensive study for for everything on the expert exam but cloud i i've been that's like been my every day just like kind of immersing mm -hmm. myself in in the topic um so adobe has everything they're going to ask you on the test is part of their documentation and you can sit and you can pour over it and you can and you can and you can uh just kind of extensively review and and familiarize mm -hmm. yourself with that um but then of course we're we're trying to distill that and make it comprehensible in the course that we're building specifically for this purpose uh because i mean mm -hmm. since since we kind of got this news that it's it's cloud or bust uh with being able to pass <laughs> these yeah. professional or expert exams <laughs> we've been working yes. very hard to put out 
material that's going to help people with exactly mm-hmm. this. Um, and so that's like right. th- that, unlike other courses that we've done, um, mm-hmm. like being able to help someone that doesn't specifically have access to cloud pass these exams, that's, that's like the mission statement for this course and the, and the key thing that we have in mind. So, I mean, you might take one of our other courses and, 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 realize that that kind of getting hands on with it is key and you need a magento environment for that Mm -hmm. and everything for this course that's right for this course we're aiming it at an audience that you know the the material that we're covering in the course is the access that they're going to have and they're not going to have access other than that Mm -hmm. that's right which brings me to the question so chris are you copying the questions off the test and just helping people memorize those questions (laughs) well no no, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, and, and honestly, like when it comes to memorization, like I said, everything's on Adobe's documentation and you have a great mm-hmm. resource there. But I think better than memorization is is uh, getting your head around the topics. And like we're like we've been talking That's about, right. they're topics of discomfort for your typical dev because because they deal with things that, that we just don't usually deal with mm-hmm. with application development like and we're talking about yeah. using YAML files to configure the size limitations of the service containers in your cloud environment. Um, like maybe you've dealt with things like that in your development career. Maybe you haven't. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so, so like, yes, it's important to kind of get uh, to, to kind of extensively learn the, the material. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the thing yeah. I really want to help people do is get their, get their heads wrapped around those key concepts. Like what are, what are ECE tools? What's that for? What mm-hmm. what part does that play in how your project's built in the cloud environments? What's the what's the Magento Cloud CLI tool? What what stuff can you do in the web interface? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that's that that's the key thing. Like that that's how we approach the topics. Is not just kind of yeah. by by rote um, throwing facts at you, but like helping you helping familiarize you with with what those things really are and what they do. And I think that helps you even going back to the documentation after that will help you distill it right. and make more sense out of what's there. I think that's good. And I think that is a, another way to sum up our mission, overall mission statement here, when, as we help people prepare for certifications, at least in the products that help people prepare for those, is we are, um, you know, let's if we view the certification passing that as the baseline, it's our goal to help people pass it that much above that certification. And so, um, you know, this is... And, and I think what you're talking about is a good example of that. If we can help people understand the ideas behind and why and all this stuff, um, it benefits way further down the road than just passing the exam. It's valuable passing the exam, but the goal is that it is much more comprehensive than that. So, uh, and I, I'm really grateful for your leadership, Chris, and the hard work you've been putting into this to truly equip and help developers all across the world be able to tackle this fairly seemingly difficult challenge. Uh, it's It was kind of a bit of a uh, uh, surprise for a lot of us here in the community when that when this popped up, but uh, you have led the charge and done some really great work uh, in in as you have you as you've pulled this information together and distilled it into an easily digestible format to help people pass the test. Yeah. I'm really excited about yeah, that. It'll be a, this will be a great test of if I'm good at what I do because uh, uh, That's right. be, because like we want this course to help people that just can't get hands on with cloud themselves mm-hmm. to, to be comfortable yep. with it. Uh, well, and, and also those again, who, who have not had hands on, I mean, so even if they have access, right, it's, it's, it's this, that whole group of people that can help pass the test. Absolutely. Very good. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you again, Chris, and we'll catch up later. Take care.